I, I'm a resident in Canada, awesome. And I have been doing research at the intersection of AI and sociology with my mentor, Dr. Farhan Samir. Um, and during my term in this program, I was able to look at analyzing connotation frames and involving Wikipedia biographies. So this year's Mr. William Eric Alto, he was an American soldier. You may be wondering why he's important. While well, going into the program, a big thing that I was eager to explore, um, I had the chance with my mentor um, was the intersection of AI and sociology. And so it is not an unknown fact that um, many groups over time have discriminated against their societal perceptions have shifted as well. Um, with the evolution of perceptions, a crucial aspect of examining how this perception change over time is how language evolves. And so um, that reflects changes in societal views, perceptions, and so the profound relationship between linguistic evolution and a shifting societal lens emerged as a pivotal factor um, when, when dissecting this. And the big question is, uh, what is the dynamic evolution of society's outlook on minority groups over time? People like William Eric Alto, who was an LGBTQ individual and a member of a historically marginalized group, have paved the way for investigating Wikipedia biographies and, and their edits, revealing how they mirror um, the evolving societal perspectives and or change societal views. So by scrutinizing revisions in societal revisions and language used in these biographies, insights emerge into shifting perceptions and attitudes towards these minority groups. So through this lens, you can unravel not only transformation in how these groups are depicted, but also gain an understanding of the broader societal transformation that underpin these shifts. And so what's first revealed was uncovering shifting depiction, shedding light on public perce perceptions and biases um, as a connected language analysis history, technology, social movements, understand sentiment dynamics. And so moving back to this, um, the research that I was able to conduct looked at many different people over time. And today I have two examples. The first is Mr. William Eric Alto. This is an extract of a scientist from biography from 2007. And over here it reads that he was later recruited by the Office of Strategic Services, but then he was discovered to be homosexual and released by William Donovan. The later version reads that at this time, Alto confessed to God that he was homosexual and other um, OS Lincoln veterans reported the fact to the organization, um, had General William Donovan requesting him to remove from their uh, team. And so um, the compared to passages from 2007 to 2013, discussing Mr. William Eric Alto, um, the American soldier reveals nuanced shifts um, in how he was viewed. So the initial passage implies a causal connection uh, between Alto's recruitment and homosexuality, suggesting a negative link. In contrast, the 2013 version presents the events without strong causality, reducing negative connotations. So the initial phrasing implies hidden homosexuality, while the later version portrays factual, dis factual disclosure. And so the initial version emphasizes homosexuality and is released possibly denoting negativity, while the later version focuses objectively on these events. And so and though, although, um, less overtly derogatory, the earlier version carries stronger negative connotation through causal terms and judgment. So this very subtle shift showcases language's impact on historical interpretation of reflecting change societal values. Next person I have here is Mr. Henry D. Abelov, and he's an American historian, literary critic. And so um, he also experienced a very significant narrative shift in a certain part of his biography. And so a 2018 version of his biography read that he was an American academic literary scholar, professor at Cambridge Wesleyan University, and he was an inaugural F.O. Matthews and Visiting Professor of Gender and Sexuality at Harvard University. The later version is much more detailed and there's a specific emphasis on his history of sex during the modern era and, and his research into it, and how he's a very important figure in development of gay and lesbian studies and queer theory. Um, his groundbreaking books over here, as well as codifying what the fields of gay and lesbian studies and queer theory. Um, and so, the initial version in 2018 introduces him as an academic literary scholar without explicitly highlighting his involvement in LGBTQ plus discourse, notably his role as the inaugural FO visiting professor of gender and sexuality hinted at an emerging interest in these themes. However, the later, later and very recent update brought about a substantial change in both language and content. So Abelov is now described um, as a histor historian literary critic with distinct emphasis on his pivotal role shaping the landscape of gay lesbian studies and queer theory. And so this reframing kind of demonstrates a heightened level of acceptance and recognition for his pioneering contributions to these fields. And the inclusion of in most of his writings focus on history of sex during the modern era signifies a specific scholarly focus and expertise. And so this chronological evolution just kind of um, emphasizes the, that language and content reflects broader societal shifts towards greater acceptance and acknowledgement of, in this case, LGBTQ plus studies and queer theory. So 
What we just looked at was connotation frames, and connotation frames offer a multifaceted lens of understanding language intricacies. And so by delving into implied sentiment, they unveil emotion hinted at in text and revealing underlying assumptions and beliefs. And so these frames dissect specific words or phrases impact readers' perceptions and emotional responses. They capture intricate um, relationships and implied uh, sentiment within text, such as power dynamics and emotional connections, and they unearth emotions that connections evoke. And so in sentiment analysis, connotation frames uh, transcend conventional polarity identification and enable models to grasp um, subtle emotional nuances or um, that are often overlooked. And so this enhances uh, comprehension of text emotional content, specifically how um, they can make analysis of more um, nuanced content and it bridges the chasm between explicit sentiment and underlying layers of meaning. And so they decode in implicit emotional cues, contextual references, and cultural associations that enrich a message. And so the application of sentiment and connotation and also demonstrated through study of Wikipedia biographies offer significant potential in understanding um, historical context, societal perceptions. So beyond biographies, this methodology um, can uncover biases, rebuild societal shifts, and contribute to new interpretations of historical events of marginalized communities. So by comparing sentiment changes of biographies to NGO records, for example, or public opinion data, researchers can quantitatively measure advocacy's influence on linguistic shifts and validate social movement impact. So for example, this um, survey reflects how Americans are increasingly accepting women's sexuality in society. And so um, the construction of a very large model that can analyze hundreds and thousands of biographies and hundreds and thousands of edits made over time could be used to match up with real surveys like this and see if it mirrors the shifting side of perceptions in this case of homosexuality. And so to wrap up, our methodology exposed involving um, sentiments within Wikipedia biographies, underscoring interconnection between language, history, public perceptions, and it's kind of enriched our insights into shifting biases and societal dynamics, effectively bridging the analysis of language with contemporary communication patterns. So to finish off, I want to say a special thanks to my mentor, uh, Mr. Far Dr. Farhan Samir, and to the TSI Institute uh, for the opportunity. Thank you.